Welcome everyone to this virtual media roundtable for Zoo versus Frendora and Roly Romero versus Pitbull. Um, I'm very excited to be here. I'm your host, Adriana Noriega, and I have, have this, this honor to share this webinar with such esteemed media members, celebrities. We're all going to dissect and analyze all these great fights that are going down this Saturday, March 30th, a star-studded night with the inaugural PBC pay-per-view that will be available on Prime Video live from T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Now, Tim Zhu will be taking on Sebastian Fundora in a battle for two 154-pound world titles. And of course, in the co-main, we have R Rando Roli Romero putting his 140-pound world title on the line against Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Now, I'd love to introduce our panel for today. We have uh, a legend in two games like Pee Wee Kirkland, a rapper who is now the host of the popular show Million Dollars Worth of Game. Welcome, Gilly. I like that, legend in two games. I like that. <laughs> for sure, absolutely. How are you doing, Gilly? Thank you for joining us. I never had a bad day in my life. We just have bad moments, and uh, it's up to us to what we do with the rest of the day. Absolutely, absolutely. And also joining us, we have one of the greatest lyricists in hip hop history and a huge boxing fan. Welcome, Immortal Technique. Harlem in the building. How are you doing, Immortal? I'm good. I'm excited to watch these fights. I, I know a lot of the people fighting. Um, it's always an honor. I'm, I'm going to be out there um, in Vegas uh, for the weigh ins and I'm uh, just happy to be working with people that want to put on great fights and see see uh, these these people who are going to be killing each other in the ring um, do a lot more with their career than just, you know, beat the hell out of each other. They they all they're so young. That's the one thing we got to remember. And they're, they're coming out with a vengeance. And, you know, I, for the people that were disappointed that Mr. Thurman was injured, man, the, the fight from before was for no belts at 155 and now it's for two belts at 154 and the winner may get the dream matchup against Terrence Crawford either next or the fight after that so the, the fight just got that much more exciting I'm just happy to be here he'd be a part of it absolutely it is I'll see you there in Vegas can't wait um it's going to be a great fight the the whole card is stacked and and I like to bring in someone who knows exactly what boxing is all about he's been there in and out He's a former 154-pound world champion and an acclaimed broadcaster. Welcome, Raul Marquez. Thank you. Um, I'm just uh, super thrilled to be on here with you guys. And uh, the debut of PBC on Amazon Prime. Everybody's excited. Everybody's been waiting for this great card. I think we got some great fights. And I'm just here, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited and content to be sharing my knowledge and be able to break down uh, the fights. I like to see everybody's opinions and let's see what, well, we look forward to. Absolutely. And last but not least, he's a longtime journalist who has written for the New York Times for a very long time and just published his book, My Fighting Family, Borders and Bloodlines and the Battles That Made Us. Welcome, Morgan Campbell. Adriana, thanks for having us. Uh, Gilly, Raul, Tech, great to meet all of you. This is big right first pay-per-view on 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 amazon prime this is Not sort it. of a, a a turning point right big time boxing uh in the united states heading into a new era this is very exciting yes it is it's a it's a new a new beginning pbc now on prime video and uh what better way to kick it off with this star-studded uh card a little change these past couple weeks i know uh well, i want to start off with saying uh my my, my my heart goes out to Keith Thurman. I hope that you feel better, champ. Heal up. We can't wait to see you back in the ring. Um, but now with this change with Keith Thurman being out, we have, um, of course, Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Frendora. I want to start off with getting your, your thoughts and reactions um, when you hear that Keith Thurman is out due to an injury. And now, you know, I'm sure thoughts start to to rush in. Who's going to replace them? Who who else is the 154 pounds that that can fill in those shoes? What was your reaction when you found out that Sebastian Fendora was going to be replacing Keith Thurman? I'll start with you, Gilly. Uh, my reactions was it's a good thing because I thought Tim Zoo was going to whitewash uh, Keith Thurman. 
we we know with in boxing you can't play boxing. Keith Thurman has been out for years on top of years with no activity. So to expect Keith Thurman to come back and be in performance that's anywhere near the level of Tim Zhu would have been asking for too much. I felt as though he was going to get whitewashed. I felt as though this is a that might have been a bigger fight, but this is a better fight. What about? That's what I felt. You know, I feel like. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What you saying? I feel like Fandora uh, versus uh, Tim Zhu is a is a a much more even fight right now than the Tim than uh, Keith Thurman. Maybe Keith Thurman would have came in and shocked me. Maybe he would have done something that I didn't think he was going to do. But when you take years off, your rhythm is never the same when you come back. You know, you you, you have that much time off. It's hard to to go in there, no matter how much sparring you do, how much training you do, it's hard to get in there and fight at a certain level when you, I think that that might've been a bigger fight, but I think this will be the better fight. It does. Uh, Immortal. Um, I see you shaking your head. You agree with what? With, with well, I agree with his assessment. The, the is definitely going to be a better fight, but I'm going to be honest. When I first heard about it, I was a little skeptical only because the last loss that Fondora took was against Brian Mendoza. And that's a person that Tim Zhu put away pretty easily. So I think that Tim Zhu is going to come into this with a, a, a big mental advantage. And I think that's going to play in to what he has. Like if, like if you just put away the person that knocked you out in the last fight, you come in with a lot, uh, uh, you know, a lot of momentum, a lot of, a lot of belief in yourself. And I believe that, you know, from, from what I've experienced and what I've seen in boxing, First of all, it's a father and son sport. Don't let everybody tell you differently. And then secondly, it, it is a lot of mental advantages. It's a lot of people coming into this game, you know, with the will and the ability to say, no, I, I already, we've already tested that water. We have a mutual opponent. You got knocked out by him and I took him to the cleaners. So I think that Tim Zhu is definitely going to come in with, with a big advantage. But at the same time, I know that Fundora's game, I know that he, he he's not coming just to lay down. He's not here for a paycheck. He's here for an opportunity to get that 154 pound title that eluded him. You know, I love to see him and his sister come together. The fa There's a family of champions, right? So I, I think that's great. It's going to be great to see the families come out and see people supporting who they love. But yeah, at first, I, the same thing with with uh, with Gilly. I was at first disappointed to say, oh man, Keith out again. Like, And the comments on his IG are vicious. If you're a fan of Keith Thurman, please don't go on any of his social medias right now because they're tearing him to pieces when most people should just be like, hey man, rest up. That could happen to anybody, unfortunately. It just keeps happening to Keith. So a lot of people have been on him. But I, I think hopefully he'll have time to rest and then come back with something and get that opportunity. He's still a name. He's still a marquee. So hopefully he'll be able to to, to pull it up and, and and do something. But yeah, I think this fight for more belts and for the opportunity to fight pound for pound great Terrence Crawford, you couldn't ask for something better. So I, I don't think that Fondor is taking that lightly. Maybe he's studying all the tapes that he had of how Zhu beat his former opponent and say, no, I'm, I'm coming here strapped. I'm ready to go. But we also know Styles makes fights as well, though. 100%. You know, like uh, I don't think Vern, Vernon Forrester was a better fighter than Shea Mosley, but he beat him twice, right? That's true. So, uh, you and know, Vernon sometimes... Forrest, and Vernon Forrest did beat Shea Mosley. I, I, I'm i real big on the amateurs. Ver, Vernon Forrest, they come from my era. So Vernon Forrest, he, he was my Olympic teammate. He beat Shane Mosley in the amateurs a couple of times, and that's we got the same result in the pros too. So it's mental, mental, you know, like you said, having that uh, – advantage of already beat this guy this guy beat him or i beat him in the amateurs that helps a lot and i believe that's why you know vernon beat him again in the in the, in the pros that's with this fight in, with, sorry Adriano. Oh, so i was just gonna say um you know it's a good point champ um what was your reaction when you heard that that fundora was was going to be replacing him well, I mean, uh, for me, I think it's the better fight. You know, uh, Fandora is always in in a in a in an action packed fight. You know, he's the guy that comes forward. I think it's it's a it's a better fight for the fans for TV. It's an action packed fight. Uh, you know, Tim Zhu's not going to have to find Fandora. Fandora is going to be there in front of him. We saw him in brutal fights. You know, look at in a fight with Erickson Lubin. That was a brutal. I mean, it was a war, and that's the kind of fights that Fandora puts on. But like we've been saying all along, Styles make fights. And I understand Felipe said that, you know, Tim Zhu has obviously a mental advantage because he beat 
Brian Mendoza, and Brian Mendoza knocked out Fundura, but you know he he when at the point when Mendoza knocked out Fundura, the Fundura was very comfortably ahead. He was ahead in the fight, uh, and you know Fundura just got caught. The thing that we don't know is when you get knocked out, like Fundura got knocked out, that's always going to, I mean, he got knocked out brutally. It was a devastated knockout. It was a high real knockout. When you get knocked out like that, we don't know how, how the fighter's going to come back. You know, what kind of confidence does he have? Uh, and that's what I want to see in Fundura. The first couple of rounds, we'll be able to tell where his confidence is at after being knocked out. It's not like he had a couple of tuna fights. He's going straight. From getting knocked out by Brian Benosa the way he got knocked out and going in there with a monster like Tim Zhu. I mean, he's that's asking for a lot, but that's the kind of fighter that Fundura is, the towering inferno. You know, I, I covered him early in his career on Showbox. He's always been a, a, a warrior, uh, an action packed fighter. Uh, call him a Me you know, Mexicans are known as action packed fight. They come to fight, they come to war. And uh, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be very interesting. I know it's going to be fireworks for sure. Morgan, your thoughts? Yeah, well, here's the question I have. Uh, and the one thing that I think works in Fundora's favor is the fact that they switched opponents on, on short notice. So in, instead of uh, preparing for a specific opponent, you got to switch plans. And the type of opponent each guy is facing now, Fundora has a lot more experience. Fundora is always a southpaw, most often facing orthodox fighters. He's always significantly taller than everyone he fights. So in that sense, Tim Zhu is just another, is one more person, right-handed, much shorter. Whereas Tim Zhu has not faced a southpaw who is eight inches taller than him. And so to make that switch on short notice, not having gone through a whole training camp preparing for that, but having to switch so late in training camp where I'm, you know, Raul can tell you like how much sparring people are doing this late in training camp, I'm sure it's not a lot. And so to have to make that switch this quickly, uh, styles make fights, but circumstances also make fights. So it seems to me that Fandora has a lot smaller stylistic change to navigate than Tim Zhu does. But like Raul, I'm curious to know what you think in terms of who has the advantage uh, when the opponent gets changed this late in the game and the styles are so different. Well, I mean, to answer your question, I think neither one because I mean they, they were still preparing for different different styles of fighters. I know I know Fandora was a uh, getting ready for, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but Botch or Bachak or something like that, the guy he was going to fight. Uh, he was preparing himself for him. Now Brian Mendoza is going to fight that guy. And then Keith Thurman uh, was going to fight, obviously. Tim Zhu. Keith Thurman is a total different style from Fundora. Um, yeah. I know that I know that immediately Tim Zhu, you know, accepted the, the challenge. I know he, he he flew in some tall sparring partners. Uh you know, Makayla Fox and Adro Holmes, who I covered on on Showtime Showbox too. you know, tall fighter. So, you know, he's doing everything that he can to get adjusted to uh, the, the the height. For, for me, you know, when I was a fighter, it was easier for me to fight a tall fighter than to fight a shorter fighter. Um, I don't think Tim Zhu is going to have a problem, you know, getting inside and working the body and breaking down the tower and inferno you know, mm. and chopping down the tree. You know, I don't think it, it's for me. And I think for Tim Zhu, a guy that comes forward and also has a, a, a mentality of, of, of being aggressive, intelligent pressure that he puts. I think it's easier for him to get underneath Fundora and work the body and chop it down like a tree. Fundora, yeah. I mean, every time he's fought, he's fought, you know, shorter guys. You're not going to fight. A, he's not going to fight a guy that he's hyped. You know, he's 6'5 or 6'6, six, six, whatever he is. Uh, so he's always fought shorter guys. I don't think either one of them has an edge in that because Fandora is used to fighting shorter guys and Zhu is either fighting guys that are his height. And like I said, I think for someone of his style, it's easier to fight a tall guy like that because it's easier to get inside. And he's not going to have to find him. You know, he's going to be there in front of, in front of him. Fandora going to be there to be hit. He comes forward. And Zhu... Has different, you know, he attacks from different angles, but he's a pressure fighter. And I think he's got to chop and up, start with the body and go over over the top. And I think, it, it, you know, he'll find it easier to catch up to someone like Fundora than it would have been with Thurman because Thurman was going to move around a lot. He was going to box and move and circle around him and give him a lot of feints and mm -hmm. movement for as long as he lasted. You know, because Thurman, you got you to gotta understand that he's been in a lot of wars. 
He's getting a lot of training camps, and he's older too. And that's probably why you know he he also got he got hurt. You know, other fighters. I'm not saying I don't understand. I don't know how hurt he was, Thurman was, but you got to understand when you're getting older, you're all, that's always going to happen. You know, your shoulder, your neck, and it's up to you if it. Thurman could have been, you know what? I'm gonna go for it. I'm, I'm just gonna go with it. I mean, I'm already older. It's a, it's a probably an injury that recurring injury that he could probably has all the time. You, when you, just me, you know, I fought all the way up until I was 37 years old, and there was always little things, you know, your knuckles, your elbow, your shoulder. When you get up in the morning, it's not the same, you know, because you're getting you're older, right? And and you guys could relate to that too. You get I, I feel that at 47, yeah. uh, and, and that's what I'm every morning, what I'm right? Me, I got you. You know what I mean? So imagine the wars that Thurman has been in. He's been in a lot of wars. He fought a lot of top guys. So he could have maybe said, you know what? Yeah, I'm hurt, but I'm going to go for it. But he decided to pull out. But now we got a better fight. I got a, We got a better action pack fight, in my opinion. We do. And, and thank you, Morgan and Raul, for reading my mind. I think this is a question that a lot of us are asking. Uh, that size difference, that that the towering inferno is 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 – beating him by nine inches difference we've seen mm -hmm. um they faced yeah. off in their media workout it's it's huge again yes sebastian fedora is used to this tim zoo he's fought bigger fighters not as big as fedora mm -hmm. but that question of how is tim zoo more specifically going to adjust at just two weeks right before the fight because he's the one with the, the bigger difference fedora is used to it uh gilly what do you make of this size difference and how it's going to affect him on fight week well okay. i i think i think uh Anytime you're fighting a fighter that's eight inches taller than you, I think it's 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 going to cause some type of problems. You know, especially if the fighter is anyone on the same level if you, as you. If the fighter is nowhere near the same level as you, then, of course, you know, you can. But if the fighter is somewhat on the same level as you, close to you as in talent, that eight, nine inches has to play some type of part. In, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's just what I believe. You know what I mean? But I'm not the expert. I haven't been the one that was fighting up until I was 36, 37 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a fan of the sport. But just just knowing if he, he's definitely going to have the reach advantage, right? If if he goes out there and he puts his jab out there consistently, right. consistently <laughs> makes it hard for for Tim Zhu to get around the jab, if he even says to himself at all, I'm a fight with a little distance, just right. a little bit of distance, he can make it a rough night for Tim Zhu. I have because a question, guys. Game... When has Sebastian Fundora ever done that? Exactly. That, 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 that was so, my point. So let's not get yeah. tired. That's my next question. Now. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Sebastian doesn't use that jab most of the time. Right. <laughs> I want to hear. I want to hear from uh, Immortal. Um, your 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 thoughts on on the size difference, and then we'll we'll get to we'll we'll get to styles in a, in a little. Bit. <laughs> well, so here's an interesting comparison. Um, Tim Zhu loves to be in the pocket, so him being super comfortable there as a fighter, I think, works for his advantage because I don't know how long Fondora's elbows are to be able to block some of those body shots. But the point that um, that Champ brought up. Is 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 interesting, and then Gilly also uh, coming in and saying, "Oh, you have someone switching up at the last minute." Um, but I I didn't know that he was choosing those sparring partners, champ. I think that's interesting. I, I went to the Joshua Ruiz fight, also a huge size difference, right? And also right. an opponent, but in the reversal where you know, you're switching at the last minute and you're not getting a tall guy, you're getting a short guy that's mm -hmm. coming against you. And someone didn't do their homework. I, I I've never heard Tim Zhu talk like a cocky champion. He's always spoken like, no, I do my homework on people. I'm coming to investigate you. Like the F I, I want to see how you move. I want to see how you, how you react in these specific things. He strikes me as a person who watches a lot of tape. I know tons of boxers. I've never actually met Mr. Zoo. I met his father years and years and years yeah. ago. But um, someone who's very comfortable in the pocket, is there going to be an upset that's going to be able to be pulled off? Um, I'm not sure. But I did see that it was really, really interesting that that Joshua and Andy Ruiz fight where no one expected it to go the other way. And then, you know, to come downstairs and see some of my peoples from like the Cypress Hill camp that was spending. Right. Free, you know, I was like, wait, what happened? And they said, we bet 100 on Ruiz. And I was like, what? $100? And you, no, no, no. He just said, you don't understand. I say, we bet 100,000. 
on Andy. And I said, oh, my God. And the odds were 17 to 1. So I don't wow. know what, what the, the Vegas odds makers have on this fight. But I would like to see how those numbers factor into the whole equation because this is a business that masquerades as a sport. I've heard a lot of fighters say. <laughs> so I think that it, it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Um, but again, I, I, in, if the fight stays in the pocket, I, I'll, I'll lean towards Zhu. If it stays on the outside where Fondora has a larger jab or he's he's able to get at him, which we've just said he doesn't do that often, um, but maybe if he switches up his strategy, there'll be a way for him to find something, find an opening. But again, Mr. Zhu is very comfortable in the pocket. It's going to be hard to then reach all the way around or try to come with something. So I I would give, if they stay close, I give the advantage to, to Tim Zhu. I just right. want to let y'all remind y'all that Pandora was working Brian out until mm -hmm. he got caught. Right. He was very comfortable. It's, ahead, it's not like he went in there and and he got his ass whipped. No, he was working Brian out and he just got caught with a punch. So yeah. that kid can fight. Yeah. You, that, this is not no kid that they're just throwing in there and, oh, he just mm -hmm. got knocked out. No, he was giving... Brian Mendoza, good old Richard Simmons, old school workout <laughs> until he got caught. No, I like, think I think Gilly, I think you're you're, you're right. You know about it, if Fedora fights a very disciplined fight, and that's the only thing. You know, that's my only question. You know, if he if he uses the jab and, and you know the, the reach and his height to his advantage and keep everything at the end of his punches and pick his spots when he wants to trade with Zoo, but at the majority of the fight, he's got to be able to control the distance at mid and long range, stay away from Zoo because Zoo also likes to, you know, like Felipe said, likes to control the distance, you know. He's really good at short, mid, and long distance, you know, long distance, but his, I think Zoo is better when he comes forward, but if he could control, if, if Fundura could keep him on the outside and just keep everything at bay, tag him with the jab, keep him on the outside, give him angles, keep moving, don't force a firefight, especially early on, then yeah, he could give him a lot of tr trouble, but Pandora is the type of guy, like I said, and I've been covering him from early in his career when we had him on Showbox. He's the kind of guy that as soon as he gets hit, as soon as he gets hit, he thinks war. And that's the biggest mistake he could make with Zoo. You know, he he shouldn't go into uh, a war with Zoo early on. He needs to stay disciplined, use that long jab, one, two down the middle, long shots down the middle. Try to keep him at bay as much as he can and just hold him at you know, Zoo gets in inside, just hold them, let the referee separate and get back on the outside, keep the fight in the center of the ring, stay away from the ropes, stay away from the corners, and keep holding them. And, and you know, try to wear him down. You know, put his big old body on him, and, you know, he's 6'5". You know, the, a guy that's 6'5", even though he's lanky, but if you're leaning your body on the guy, you, he's going to get you tired. And then maybe in, in the second half of the fight, you could kind of open up more. But th that's the fight that – that's the game plan that I would – if I was working – for this corner, that's what I would tell him to do. Absolutely. When I, spoke, when I spoke to Thurman not too long ago, well, when the fight was still with Thurman, you know, he compared Tim Zhu's style to Gennady Golovkin, someone who just, you know, um, not too much movement, but just come forward, uh, lots of power. And knowing Sebastian Fondora for a while, you know, he's, he's Mexican and Cuban. And we've talked about a mesh of the two styles, the Mexican style and La, La Escuela Cubana. Mm -hmm. However... You know, his you would think that with his size, with his that's reach, what he has to do. He would, he would use more of the escuela cubana. You would that's think, yeah, kind of just <laughs> he leans so, he the, 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 the Mexican style that just brawl it out like that. That right. comes out naturally for him. Um, Morgan, you you brought up this topic. I just before we switch on to the coming, that also is yeah. gonna be what are your thoughts on, on this? Well, a, a couple of things first, you know, we're talking about a, a few, these are really big ifs here. If Fundora, Fundora comes out and uses his reach, it'll be a better fight for him. That's a big if because he doesn't do that. He's a tall guy, but he, you know, you watch him fight, he uses his height more than he uses his reach. And he's very comfortable fighting on the inside where his height gives him leverage. Like he's figured out how to fight at really close range without smothering his power. He gets a lot of leverage, leverage on his punches, punching downhill because he's so tall. And like Raul said, just leaning on guys, making them tired because they got to carry his weight. Like that's how he uses his height, mm -hmm. but doesn't really use his reach. And um, the Mendoza fight was really interesting in the sense that when they would go to Mendoza's corner between rounds, him, he and Ismael Salas, like, Mendoza round by round is getting bloodier and bloodier, but they were still very calm in the corner. And Silas just kept saying, don't worry, uh, move to your right, 
There's move to your left, counter punch. You'll get him. And you would see Mendoza throwing that big left hook over the top, and it would miss round by round. We get a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer till round seven, and it landed. But they were they seemed really confident that they were going to knock this guy out, that he was just going to leave himself open, and this is what wound up happening. So Fundora, like the, the big ifs for him is can he tighten up his defense and can he put this new defense on display, not against just a guy, a tomato can, a jobber, a cab right. driver, but against the guy at the top of the division. This is asking right. a lot. That's why I'm saying these are very big ifs. Um, otherwise, it'll be a really exciting fight, probably at close range, but that's as much as that's Fundora's range, I think that's Tim Zhu's range a little bit more. And, and you know what, Morgan, I like that what you talked about the defense. I, I meant to mention that um, Fondora, a lot of times when he pulls back and he's got his chin a lot of, he carries it up high up, up in the air sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he too high his chin. So he's got to tuck his chin in, you know, because, you know, with the chin up in the air, when he pulls up back straight up, you know, with one of those overhand rights or left hands by Zoo, he could easily get caught. Kind of like uh, the way Brian Mendoza caught him with his chin up. I was going to say, I think that's what Salas and Mendoza saw on video before that fight. And then that's why they just seemed so confident, even as they were losing rounds, that eventually they would right. clip the door. Mm-hmm. Well, that night, um, Brian Mendoza had uh, Ismael Salas in his corner. Someone that will be having Ismael Salas in his corner <laughs> uh, this 30th is now Roly Romero, who's who's left his uh, longtime coach, Bullet Cromwell, and now with Salas. Um, this is a fight, Ro- Roly Romero versus Isaac People Cruz, that has a lot of us saying it could potentially steal the spotlight and steal the night from the main <laughs> event. What are your thoughts on this fight, Gilly? Easy work for Pitbull Cruz. Easy work. Easy work. Javante wow. Davis. Devontae Davis punched all the steam out of Roley Romero. If you notice, <laughs> Roley used to be an action fighter. He, Devontae Davis punched him, dropped him through the ropes. Roley came back his next two fights. Now he's a boxer. I don't know what the hell Roley is doing. So for me, I, I feel like uh, Pitbull will apply, apply too much pressure. And we already know Pitbull got a chin because Javante Davis punched him in his chin 15 times clean. And he didn't go nowhere. So I don't even think there's a chance that Roley is going to get that kid out of there. That kid's he, he's come, he's action packed, and and Roley just Roley is not a skillful fighter. He's not a he he's a puncher. But let's be for real, Roley just lost to that that Mexican guy that's 111 years old in boxing years, man. <laughs> and Barroso, Barroso, yeah, yeah, from Venezuela. Barroso. Yeah, yes, they over oh, Venezuelan guy. Yeah. yeah, they robbed that guy. That guy worked Roley worked Roley out. I'm talking about a Jane Fonda workout, a good old Jane Fonda workout. Worked him out, and they robbed that guy. So to come back and and fight Pitbull, I don't think Roley really stands a chance. He's he's not the same Roley after Javante Davis punched the steam out of him. It's gonna be a interesting night. Immortal, what do you make of the coming event? Do you think it's it can still a spot? I think this is gonna be a great fight. Um, I don't think it'll be as one-sided as Mr. Gilly does, but I think that what's interesting is that him switching back to the Cuban trainer takes us to what the champ was saying before. If you're going to go with a more Cuban style of boxing and keeping a person on the outside where you can kind of pick the shots, you're looking for the top of the skull. You're looking for the weak points in a person's anatomy. You know what I mean? And again, in order to implement that, he would have to go back to the boxing fundamentals that comes from like Cuba's program, that old USSR style of boxing that dominated the heavyweight division throughout during the 90s and and excuse, excuse me, the 90s and the, the early 2000s. Um, but I think that what you said earlier about this being potentially the the show stealer is if it is a close fight and they do go to distance, I think what's interesting is that um I don't know how many more fights because I, I don't think that Pitbull has a long history at 140. I think if anything, this is his first or second fight at that at that particular weight. What that means for a fighter um, depends on the fighter. You know, I, I've, I've read the backstory of Mr. Cruz. This is a person that's fighting for something much different than Mr. Romero. I, I, I give Mr. Romero a, a more credit, obviously, than Gilly does for his skills. But I think that Mr. Cruz is Isaac Pitbull Cruz. His his momentum to want to win this is, I think, elevated to a, a different level. 
he's coming from a place where there's extreme poverty that he's trying to escape. Not saying that Roly didn't have no no drama coming to this country, his family being Cuban, Cuban immigrants, people going through that, whatever whatever struggle they have to. But for a person, when I watched the, the prologue, where he says, listen, I didn't have but a tortilla to give my family. I was dead broke. We were living off nothing. You know, my wife almost had to go out begging in the streets for me to feed my children. He's a person that's fighting for life. They're not fighting for just glory. They're not fighting for, oh, yeah, I want, I want to take pictures with celebrities in the belt. Isaac Cruz strikes me as the person that, sure, he'll, he'll, he'll dabble in that world, but he's here to fight to feed his family. He is, the buck stops with this fight. If he loses this fight, he has to go back to the bottom of the totem pole and fight his way back up, maybe at 135 even. And I think that what's great about that fight is it is a little bit of make or break for the two of them. You know, Roley is coming off of, as, as Mr. Gilly brought up, a very questionable win, which a lot of fans were pouring onto um, in terms of the Ismael Barros fight. But also in terms of the tank fight, um, I don't think a person can take a beating like that and not learn something from it, I, unless they're so damaged by the knockout that they've they've lost sense of what's going on. So I think obviously but we can agree. Can we agree that since the tank fight, his whole style is switched up? I think that's from him going yeah. back to plus. I think you're right. He has to go back to a Cuban boxing style. He switched trainers. So every time somebody switched trainers, Gilly, of course their style is going to change. Like if if I if I'm in 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 with somebody and all of a sudden I'm in with somebody else and they telling me like for example Ryan Garcia's style switched when he went to Derek James. It didn't change by that that much, but it changed in terms of some of the fundamentals. We saw more footwork instead of that flat footed nonsense. He came out and got destroyed by Tankwood, but at the same time, you did see some things that obviously can't be changed overnight in a fighter, Gilly. You're right about that. But at the same time, going to a different trainer is going to bring out something different in you. If that is him coming from the outside, I think he has a better chance than standing and banging with him. But I think he does hit hard for a 140 pounder. And I think the other difference is that I could see Mr. Romero rehydrating about 15 17 pounds on fight night. I don't know what Pitbull is going to come in. If he was moving up to 140 from 130 in the 135 division, then I don't see him coming up more than five, 10 pounds. So we're going to see Romero with the obvious weight advantage of almost 10 pounds, which is basically putting him in another weight class and then, and then some. So I think he, he's going to have the advantage for that. But to, to your point, yeah, I, th I think, um, sure. I, I think a person who who takes a loss has to has to come back mentally before they can obviously come back physically. How that will play into the fight, we're gonna have to see because it it, it was was it a mental boost winning a one forty pound belt with everybody yelling at you and 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 crying foul? No, but at least he had the the the. I think this is why this this fight is important for him because you had so many people saying negative things about that fight with Ismail that him fighting Pitbull. And him, how about this, Gilly? If, even if he lose, but he go to distance, people will give him his respect. They'll say, okay, whatever happened with that old man was a fluke because you went the distance with Pitbull Cruz. So if that's the case, I think it'll put him in a, a position that even if he lose the fights, he'll have more opportunities. And as we all know, because we got people that don't just do the business of the fight, not just the, the fans and celebrities like we are, but the champs in here, we all know that losing a fight could get you a bigger fight more than winning a fight sometimes in this business. Yeah, so it may true. potentially lead to him being able to be in another fight if he can go to distance and somehow keep Pitbull Cruz off. I think the only way to keep Pitbull Cruz off is to go back to that old Russian, you know, excuse me, Cubano style where right. he's, he's boxing from the outside. But I, I, I give it to the kid. They can both crack at, at short distance and they're both really dangerous in the pocket. I love, the I, I love the contrasting styles because when you, you know, when you have, if, 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 if it's a one-sided fight, then everyone just, like you already know what's going to happen. Everyone agrees. But if you have contrasting styles, opinions, um, then you know it's a good fight and something that 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 for sure uh, mm -hmm. will create fireworks. And just a reminder, of course, that this fight will be on PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. So we cannot miss to see what will happen with the main event between uh, Fundora and Zoo and, of course, Roly versus Pitbull. Um, I'd like to turn it over to Kenneth Buher. I know we have questions from the media. Um, they want to they want to pick your brain, too. Thanks, Adriana. Uh, as a reminder, guys, if you have any questions, be sure to raise your hand and unmute yourself once you are called. Our first question is from Marcus Hayes of Fight Hub. Uh, Marcus, go ahead, unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? Gilly, Immortal Technique, what's happening? Morgan, Raul, and of course, Adriana, how you doing? How you doing? Um, hey. What's up, man? Raul, 
Champ, I want to ask you, I want to take you back. Um, the year is 97, uh, I think it was. Uh, okay. December of 97, you fought against Luis uh, Ramon Campos, right? Right. You were, unde you were undefeated and you end up getting knocked out. Um, you took some time off, Champ. What's the biggest thing that you think kind of restarted you back into winning uh, that Fundora could take with him that you would tell him if you had a chance to talk to him? Well, I mean, it's it's a little bit of a it's a big difference, you know. When I, I actually I got stopped in the ninth round, I had uh, taken a, a fight. I had fought three months before on the Oscar De La Hoya uh, uh, Hector Camacho card. That was the co-main event against a very tough guy from uh, Brooklyn or Bronx, New York, uh, Keith Mullins. Keith and Mullins, I was, I right? Cut, yeah, I got cut up really bad. I mean. I had, I had like 70 some stitches. So three months later, here I am uh, fighting a Mexican monster, your boy campus, a knockout artist. Uh, when the fight was stopped, uh, it was even, but obviously they stopped it because my fight, my, uh, my face didn't hold up. You know, my, I was all banged up and bleeding and stuff, but I couldn't see anymore at the point of the stop is the fight was even, you know, I didn't get, you know, I still took some time off. I took like eight, nine months off before I came, got back in the ring, let my face heal right, which I should have done that. After the Keith Mullins fight, I shouldn't have gotten in the ring three months later. I should have waited like six six months at least for my face to heal, and maybe things would have been different. Uh, you know, I, I thank God, I, knock on wood, you know, I have a son that boxes too. I hope, you know, that never happens to him where he gets not Pandora the way he got knocked out. You know, that was a brutal knockout. You know, it was a besides the war that he was in with Erickson Lubin. Uh, in my opinion, I, I think that Pandora should have taking an easier route, you know, maybe taking one or two tune-up fights before he fought a guy like Tim Zhu, if that answers your question, you know. But the warrior that he is, and, you know, he's an old-school fighter. I know him and his dad, they're old-school. They want to fight the best to be the best and get the best fights. Uh, that's probably why they took the fight. Uh, yeah, they feel that they're ready. They know what they've been doing in camp. Uh, that's their deal. You know, but if it was – if if I was this – you know, management group or trainer, I would have maybe matched him up uh, in an easier fight, you know, just to see how he comes back from getting knocked out brutally in the uh, by Mendoza. That's what I would have done. If that and it, it, it definitely does. And and I also wanted to touch on the Roller Romero and Pitbull Cruz fight. Um, a lot of people that I've been interviewing and speaking to have had a contrary belief that uh, Roly Romero actually is going to steamroll Pitbull Cruz. Uh, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, and it, and in particular, somebody like Leonard Ellerby. Leonard Ellerby told me that he thought that uh, Pitbull <laughs> Cruz was going to get KO'd by Roly Romero. I want to know what you guys think about that. I know. Well, you know, I know. I think a little bias that fight. <laughs> I, you know, it, it, for, in my opinion, it's a very interesting fight. Look, if if we get the pit bull that fought Giovanni Cabrera, we know that movement gives pit bull problems. Giovanni Cabrera was in, in the fight with pit bull in his last fight. And, and let's, let's be honest, uh, uh, pit bull didn't look that good. It was, I believe it was a close fight. It was a majority decision win for pit bull. Okay, we get that pit bull against Roley, then I don't know. You know, it, 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 it might be a competitive fight. But if we, if we get the pit bull that fought Tank Davis against the Roley, that fought Barroso, then yeah, uh, I think Pitbull will, is going to run over him. You know, Pitbull is like the Energizer Bunny; he doesn't stop; he just keeps coming. Tight defense, and and if we get the Pitbull, I mean the 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 Roly Romero that fought Tank Davis, because when he fought Tank Davis, Roly was in the fight all the way up into the end until until he got caught and he got put to sleep. If we get that Romero against the the Pitbull that fought Giovanni Cabrera, then it'll it'll make it an interesting fight you know but i know gilly was saying that pit um, uh romero's not the same ever since he fought uh tank after he got knocked out he's right you know he he he's a scared fighter he he fights scared but sometimes when you're scared like that uh, at that level a scared fighter could be dangerous the reason i say roley could be dangerous is because he does have power he's got one punch knockout power and he he just he, you don't know where he's coming from. He, he punches from different angles. He's very awkward. That's the only thing that Pitbull has to look out for. He, he's got to tighten up on his defense, shorten up on his shots. You know, you know he's going to come forward. He, he's like a little Mike Tyson. You know, he works the body. He, he's good with his hooks. He works behind the jab. 
He's in great shape. He gets better as the fight goes on. And I, yeah, I, I see Pitbull pulling out the decision. They're both fighting because they want that rematch. Both of them want a rematch with T Tank Davis. And I think the winner of that, of that fight hopefully will get a rematch with, uh, with Tank. Hey, can I ask something, can I, can I ask yeah, something about ahead, this fight? Uh, the thing about Roley, this is the thing we got to remember about Roley, right? Is that his family is Cuban. His current coach is Cuban, but uh, Roley did not learn to fight in Cuba. So when we talk about the Cuban style, if you're picturing like Rigo, right? If you're picturing <laughs> at the extreme end, Andy and, and, Cruz. And that's what I'm confused yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. He's, I'm he's, like, Roley had some of the heaviest feet in the country. Yeah, he's, he he's, doesn't have good head movement. He's not slick. Where's the no, Cuban at, Roley? Ro I don't well, because, well, it's, it's because... He grew up in Las Vegas. He didn't learn to fight. He didn't learn to box at La Finca, right? Where, where right. Andy Cruz put in his time, where Rigo put in his time, where Gamboa put in put in his his time. And the thing about Ismael Salas, like where he's at, had a lot of success with Cuban fighters. It's been with the guys who've had like hundreds of amateur fights uh, coming over to the U.S., kind of struggling to make that transition to professional style fighting. And he's been the guy that's been able to bridge that gap. Whereas with Roley, he kind of has the opposite problem. It's not that you have to take a finesse fighter and make him more authoritative. It's that you got this really strong guy. And the, the question you never had with Roley Romero was about his strength, his conditioning, his punching power. He always has that. But it's like the fine points of boxing where he uh, lost against Tank Davis. He's got out maneuvered, outboxed, and ran into that shot. Yeah. And then with um, Barroso, like he could not find a way to outbox this old man who hit hard. And so... Mm -hmm. Now, can he make, can he refine um, Roley Romero's strength and make him a, like a, a, a better tactical, technical boxer in the space of one training camp? No, Ismael Salas is a, great, is, a, is a great trainer, but yeah. this is a, 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 a tall, tall, <laughs> tall task, especially against a guy like Pitbull, who, if he's at his best, is not going to give Roley time to think about what he wants to do. He's just going to jump on him. It takes time for, you know, a trainer to get... A fighter and a trainer, like you said, you know, that's his first camp with Roley. It's going to take fights to get adjusted and mm. teach him what he really wants to teach him. You know, it, one fight is not going to be enough. To yeah. me, the best, the best, the best version of Roley, Roley was the version at Fort Tank. Tank, yeah, that was the that was Probably. the best version of. Him. Then he got knocked out. And that version left him. Now he's acting like he's a boxer, like he like he understands distance, like he understands footwork, like he understands proper head movement, and he doesn't understand none of that. You look like somebody that started boxing at 18 years old and probably was a hell of an athlete in other things, and you're just strong. So if you're not using your strength to your advantage and you're trying to be a boxer, you're not a boxer. When I think of a, a somebody, a Cuban style, I think of somebody that's slick. I think of somebody that 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 wants to hit you and not get hit. I, the only problem the Cubans have when they turn pro is sitting down on their punches, mm -hmm. learning right. how to sit down on their punches and getting away from the amateur style. Ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, I'm moving. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm moving. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I ain't trying to knock you out. I'm just trying to add up the points so I can win. Once they learn how to sit down on their punches like the kid Andy Cruz. He had to go work with Bozy to learn how to sit down on his punches. Once you learn how to sit down on your punches, you still got that slick style, the head movement, the footwork, the knowing the distance, the angles. When I look at Roley, I don't see none of that. Right. It is on that Lada is a good example, too. You know, even though he's older, but Lada mm -hmm. now, he, he's really sitting down more on his shots. And, he, you know, he's got the Cuban style of boxing. He's very slick. He moves. He, he's he's an, a, a great fighter. Hey, Raul, let me tell you, old Edislandi Lara is a lot of fun to watch because he's a little bit older say, now. You know why? <laughs> he yeah, doesn't because... have the footwork anymore. He can't run. He's because in the he pocket. He's, he's, yeah. and I, he's, he's making, a lot of fun. More of a tight fight. You're right yes. about that. Yeah. Yeah. But if you ask me, I think he beat Canelo. That was a close fight. Oh, yeah. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Very close that fight. Ain't. Canelo couldn't hit that man with nothing but a body shot. <laughs> you know, you know you're right, boop -bop, I'm out of here. Boop -bop, I'm out of here. Boop -bop. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> I think um I think to to answer Marcus Hayes' question, um, I'm a person that admits their biases, right? So if you ask me something about Benavidez versus Canelo, I'm friends with Benavidez. I have to disclose that before someone's <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you're just rooting for your friends. You're right. 
I am. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but do I think one person could beat another person in, in, in a fight? That's a different story. However, when, when I'm confronted with these type of fights, um, I always expect the unexpected, especially when someone has something to prove. And the two of these people, like I said before, have something to prove. It is a make or break fight in terms of some career, in, in terms of Pitbull. I think he's coming here to 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 not just say, okay, I'm, I'm I'm here to survive. I'm here for a check. No, he's here to become champ because he knows that that'll put him in position to fight other people at 140. That'll be huge. That's the winner of Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia that's going to come up, right? There's also Tia Fimo. Those are giant marquee names. Those are people that will bring incredible amount of revenue. You know, if Roley catches him in any way, shape, or form coming in at 157, you know what I mean? Then it, it, it's going to be a lot more power behind the punch. Um, in terms of him not being a traditional Cuban fighter, that's true. And it's hard for people to adopt a style in three months. But unlike the other people, the opponent isn't being switched up at the last minute. You've had a lot of time to prepare. And I, I never believe boxers when they say, oh, I don't I don't even watch tape. I don't study him. <laughs> That's cap. You, you have to be studying someone who's trying to kill you, right? Uh -huh. There are more injuries in MMA, but there are more deaths in boxing, all right? Uh -huh. I think somebody said at the beginning, you can't play this sport. This is not a sport you play games with. You don't do that. People die in the ring every year. And a person has to be conscientious of that, especially if they're going in the ring with someone that could potentially hurt them or hinder their career. So I, I don't think that Mr. Romero is taking Pitbull Cruz lightly at all. Whether that matters to Cruz is a whole nother story. Um, when a person comes in fighting for that kind of ambition, it's the difference in between an invading army and somebody that's fighting for their homeland. So if this person says, this is my homeland, my wife and my kids, I'm not going to be able to feed them without this victory. It puts an extra battery in his back. How that plays out when you get hit from an angle, as the champ said, which you may not see coming, those are the punches that hurt, right? Those are the ones that really hurt you, man. Those ones that you don't see coming, not just in, in boxing, but to quote Mr. Miyagi, that's a lesson for whole life, right? Those punches that you don't see coming are the ones that really hurt you. The betrayals, the every, anything else. But in, in reality, that's what we have here. We have the unexpected versus the expected. Everybody's expecting Pitbull Cruz to come out hard, to come out heavy, to not fall back. He won a Mexican slugfest. And that's what Roley said in the press conference. To his credit, he did say, oh, you want a Mexican slugfest. And he said to him in Spanish, which is something I really like, the fact that we're seeing him speak Spanish, even though he can't speak it perfectly. Who cares? Right? Come out and just... Be you. So he said, no, no, I'll give you exactly what you want. He said, you want to meet me in the middle of the ring? Yo te veo ahí. Está bien. That's what he told ¿Quién me. ¿Quién es el más macho? Oh, right. That's what he said. So, I mean, I, I think that'll be interesting to see. Because if those two are just trading and trading and trading, we know that they they both punch really hard. So we what we could have is a great, exciting fight for about three or four rounds. But uh, definitely, I think from the panel, it doesn't matter who one, one person thinks is going to be there. Most people don't think that this thing is going to a decision. Most people think that this thing is, is going to be a stoppage or a knockout or a TKO or whatever, however it may, however the chips may fall. So, again. Can I ask the legend a question? Ro. Yes, sir. When you're talking about an A-class fighter or a mm -hmm. B-class fighter, right? Yeah. One of the things that make them A-class fighters and B-class fighters is they have A-class chins, right? Right. Durable. B-class chins. Take a shot. Yeah. But Can I haven't hit? seen I haven't seen Roley knock out an A-class or B-class fighter yet. You're right. You're right. So when, so when we say, oh, he got this power, he got this power, uh, you put me in there with a certain cab driver, I'm going to look like I got power. But who's the eighth class fighter that Roly that Pitbull knocked out? But what I, all I'm saying is I'm he not didn't saying win against Davis, but he held no. his own enough for him to see what I mean. He held his own. He went the distance with Javante Davis that not many people could brag about doing, Gilly. So in that sense, he if 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 Roley could do the same thing he did and go the distance, it it sounds fucked up, but that'd kind of be a win for him. I think that would get him even more fights potentially. And but he got we'll, 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 we'll see. We'll see. Pitbull Cruz went the distance. With an A plus fighter who's yes. known for punching people's dicks in the dirt, and he <laughs> hit that man on his chin fifteen to twenty times plus, and that kid didn't go nowhere. And he but took he, it. He and when he and when he hit Roley, when he hit Roley, he put Roley to sleep. He put Roley in another world, mm -hmm. in Gilly's world. <laughs>
<laughs> Rolly looked look like he had a little bit of stuff I'd be having. Hey, I don't know what. Hey, I don't know what he had. Yet. You know, it's, it's funny because <laughs> I, I always that. see that brought up too. That that Javante, he don't like to say it, but he was fighting with an injured hand too. I think that that's something that not, a lot of boxers don't like to mention because it comes off as an excuse. But no, Javante, he injured he, his hand on Pitbull's yeah, yeah. head. Yes. He broke his hand. <laughs> So he was already fighting with one hand for four rounds. You have to factor that into the fight and say to yourself, <laughs> honestly, if he had his both his hands for those extra four rounds, would he have found the mark that he was looking for? He may have gotten a stoppage, so we don't really know. But my point is, he found the mark 15 to 20 times before he hurt his hand. And that kid didn't buckle, didn't daze, did nothing. It was like this. But also, I, also, also, remember, no, 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 no. Here's the thing, Gilly. Here's the thing. It wasn't this. It was this. Pitbull defense is actually underrated. All them shots we saw Javante hit him in the face with, he blocked 90% of them. So he do got a chin. That's great. When it's covered by a glove, that's fine. But when the, the, when the, the chin is not covered by the glove, that's what we waiting to see. I still haven't seen the highlights. I'm going to go rewatch them as soon as we off right now. <laughs> but please. I remember okay, Javante tech, hold blocking on. most jump of in here? Shots. But that's part of it. Right? right. Like it's not his job to go out there and see how hard of a shot he can take directly on his chin if he leaves his hands down. Right. Right. But I think the bigger point that everyone's kind of dancing around here, uh, take Davis is five foot five and has cast <laughs> a shadow over two huge fights, because when they announced the Haney Garcia fight, all these guys could talk about the two of them was which one of them got their ass kicked by tank the least. Right. <laughs> And that's how they were trying to sell that fight instead of selling it on their own merits. Now, this fight, Roley versus Pitbull, like two guys, the biggest thing in their career is a loss to Tank Davis. And now, like, this is how we're talking about them, measuring them against Tank Davis. How did they lose to Tank Davis? But really now, with the two of them in the ring, this is each of them, their chance to establish their own identity apart from Tank Davis. Yeah, it leads to a, a Tank Davis rematch, uh, potentially. But at, at a certain point, like, you can't live your whole career off a, lo a loss to Tank Davis. Yeah, I lost well to Tank Davis. Okay, but what are your signature wins and not your signature losses? And, you know, obviously Cruz did a lot better against Tank Davis than Roley did. Um, and Tank is sort of the, the measuring stick and he's the common opponent. But again, what's important, I think, for these two in this fight is for one of them to put on a performance that makes people remember that win instead of remembering that loss. Let's let's get to some more media questions. We've got uh, Jay Coates. Jay, uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm Jay Hako, Hako Boxing News. I salute to the whole panel. Uh, Raul Marquez, uh, I have a, qu a question to ask you. Uh, let's say you you were in uh, Zoo and Pandora predicament. What is going through your mind in the last two weeks and they change your opponent? You know, uh, is, it, is it harder to prepare for the next guy? And mentally, how long does it take you to get off the last guy that you are about to fight? Well, I mean, look, if you, I mean, obviously, Fandura might have a different answer, but if it was me, uh, when you get A-level fighters like Fundura, I mean, you know, that guy had a good amateur background. He's been in there with some A, B-level fighters. And that's something that you're always going to deal with in boxing. You know, you got to deal with the unexpected. I mean, these guys are professionals. They took the fight because they believe that they could beat Zoo. If, I'm sure that, you know, he, he was getting prepared for another fight. And... Zoo's style, like I've been saying before, it's 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 a come forward, intelligent pressure type of guy that that puts pressure. Zoo and Fandora is a guy that likes battle too. He likes to go toe to toe. Um, I believe that you know he you know he took the fight because you know he he must you know he's in, in good shape. He was already preparing for another fight. You know he's got the experience. He's he's been in there with top guys. He's been there with guys that have different types of styles, aggressive styles. Uh, guys that that move around a lot, the guys that are slick, guys that are rough. You know, I think Fandura has been in there with all kinds of styles, and and you know, and and he's he's a great fighter. He's a really good fighter. So, you know, back to your question is, you know, how long does it take? I, I mean, 
I, I'm sure as soon as as soon as he found out he was gonna fight Zoo, and he already had envisioned himself after the the other opponent, his goal was to fight someone like Zoo. So I'm sure he he had already thought, how, what what do I have to do to beat Zoo if I ever gonna fight him? What how what kind of what do I need to bring to the table? So you know he was already thinking ahead. I don't think it's I don't think it's gonna make a a, a big difference, man, because th those styles clash, and I think it's made for a great fight to you know headline on on pay per view. And I think you know because of the change, I, I actually the fans are the ones that win because they want action, and I think it's gonna be an action packed uh, fight in the main event. And and we know what what's gonna happen in the co-main event. It's you know the pit bull. He keeps coming, and he's gonna force Romero to fight, or or he's gonna run him out of the ring. Either one. Mm. Okay, Can I add both. something to that? I believe that I'm, I've never been a fighter, but I believe that when you grow up in the amateurs and you fought hundreds of amateur fights. Yep, you're right. When you fought uh, professional fights and. You're not scared to get in the ring and go to war with somebody. This is what you do. This is what you signed up for. You've been doing this as a kid. Mm -hmm. So as a boxer who's chasing a world title, all of these kids, because I know a lot of these guys since they was kids, the Boots, the Cool Boys, the Tevin Farmers, all these kids from Philadelphia, the Danny Garcias, I knew them since they were kids. Mm -hmm. Their only dream was to be a world champion. Mm -hmm. That was the first dream that they had. I want to be a world champion. So when the opportunity presents himself, it's like, okay, last week I was fighting for just money. This week I get a chance to fight for everything. What is it to think about? Uh, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't understand what it would even be to even think about this. I've been doing this my whole life to get this opportunity right now. And you mean to tell me he broke his arm and I get a chance to fulfill my dreams? Mm. What is it to think about? Mm. Mm. I like This that. is what I, I do like for my... a living. I've been doing this since I was eight. I've been doing this since I was nine, 10. When you're eight years old, you don't know who you're fighting. You don't know what the other kid look like. What he is, you just know I'm going to show up at this tournament. I don't know what the kid look like. He could look like the roughest kid on the country. You got to get in there and fight that kid. Yep. So, so it's like, this is not a thing where I don't even think it was anything to even think about. I, I guarantee you, this camp was clapping like, holy shit. Thank you, Keith Thurman, for being old and out of shape and breaking your goddamn arm and giving me this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did go from fighting for one belt, and now he's fighting for two belts. There's two belts on the line, a unified champion on the line. The only problem is now he got to pay two sanctioning fees instead of one. You know, Champ can speak to that better than any of us, man. The motherfuckers start, start taking your money out of nowhere. You'd be like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be unified. Now it's 6%? That's too much. Right. Right now now I'm, I'm, I'm undisputed, and now y'all eating 12%? That's crazy. It's like I gave y'all work. What's going on? No, right. Man, that's good. I, I like that. I think I think Gilly Wright, man. Of course, who's not who, who come into this game to 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 play game, right? Who who's volunteering at a strip club? Nobody. People go there to make money, but they he, this is different. It's not just for money. It's for legacy. And Fundora now has legacy, a pathway to legacy. How could he turn that fight down? Also, I think in this game. You get, as a boxer, when you show heart, you can't turn nothing down. You can't turn down the smoke. And when you out there and you ask it, go buy me out for 200 million, that don't sound like you making business. That sound like you buying yourself out to smoke. No, I want to fight. I want to fight whoever, whenever, however. And I think that, that we're, we're going to see that kind of energy. How long that fight lasts with that kind of energy is a whole nother story. Because as I said before, Mr. Zhu, like his father, loved to stay in the pocket. Oh, my God. And we all know Costa Zhu is a monster in that pocket. His son is a monster in that pocket. And what I see in that fight and what I see in the prologue, too, is Tim coming in with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. Not so much against Fundora, but with his own legacy versus his own father's legacy. Say, no, I want to be the man who's known as, oh, his father is Costa Zhu, not that's Costa Zhu's son. So I, I feel that he's his father casts a big shadow. Let's keep it real. 
a unified champion, undisputed, you know what I mean? Had that famous knockout against Zab Judah. That was crazy. I, I watched that as a kid live screaming in my room. I remember. And, and later on, for this to now be popping up, I mean, how could it not be? It's not for one belt no more. They put in two belts on the line and not only two belts, but then the possibility of a massive payday against Terrence Crawford which is going to be moving up a division. So this will be his first fight at 154, packing on an extra seven pounds, right? They'll be having, okay, cool. I've been in this division. This is my division. I'm comfortable in this division. Somebody's coming up to me as a switch hitter. Wonderful. I think it's, I think it's a big opportunity for the two of them. And I think either oh, one portal. is going to come with everything. You like them strip clubs, huh? No, no, I mean, come on. That's Haram. That's Haram, bro. No, I heard the strip club <laughs> references. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank the uh, the media uh, for your questions and turn it back to Adriana now. Thank you, Kenneth, and thank you to the media for your questions and and for all of you dissecting really and analyzing these two great fights that we're going to have this March 30th, again, live on pay-per-view on Prime Video. Before we go, I do want to get your quick predictions. How do you see the main and co-main um, turning out? I'll start with Morgan. I think Pitbull is going to, I think Pitbull is better than Raleigh. I think unanimous decision, Pitbull wins at least eight rounds. Uh, main event, Zoo is just too calm, too methodical, too comfortable in the pocket. I think he winds up winning that fight by stoppage. Mm. Yeah. And and champ, Raul, what are you, what are you expecting to see? All right, uh, the, the main event. Uh, I think uh, Fondora is going to put an action pack fight like he always does. He's a warrior. I mean, he comes to fight. Uh, but I think Tim is just more more technical, just overall a, a more well-rounded fighter. He's smarter in the ring. I think uh, Tim Zhu breaks him. I think Tim Zhu breaks him in the second half of the fight, maybe stops him in late 9th, 10th round. And for uh, Roley and Pitbull, man, that's it's going to be a very interesting fighter because – I believe that I believe that you know Roley, like I'm I'm with Gilly, like what he said. You know, he he said that uh, he fights scared. Roley fights scared, but a, a guy when he fights scared, he's dangerous. You know, you don't know where he's getting, especially the way he fights. He does have power. He hits you for different angles. You know, so that's the only thing that Pitbull needs to look out for. But I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if Roley body slams. Pitbull a couple of times because he's going to hold the crap out of him. He's going to hold them. And, you know, he's going to wrestle him. He comes to, then he used to do wrestling when he was younger. And so he's going to wrestle him. He's going to be holding on to him. But I think Pitbull's constant pressure will end up stopping Roley. Or, or, or you know what? Get disqualified from just trying to survive and hold. That's what I think. And, and, and but Pitbull will win. <laughs> All right. And Immortal, what are your thoughts? What are you expecting to see on March 30th? In terms of the main event, um, I love Fundora. I, I think he's a game fighter. I think that he's brave for jumping up here and just saying, hey, listen, I don't care. But then again, that comes with the territory like we were just saying in the last one. I just think that uh, Mr. Zhu is just too, too comfortable in the pocket. And I think that if Fundora is going to keep the game close, I say Tim Zhu by KO. And that's probably, I would say, in the, in the later rounds. Um, in terms of the second one, that one, I, I don't know. I would leave it to chance. There's a part of me that really, really is rooting for, for Pitbull and a part of me that's rooting for Roley. I like these. I like both of these fighters. Like, personally, I like them. Um, like I said, I, I, I can't not claim my biases, but I have no personal biases here. I would say that, you know, to me, a lot of people think that if it goes the distance, it'll go to Pitbull. And if Pitbull doesn't see the angle, like the champ said, and he gets cracked with you know, basically someone who's coming in at super welterweight, you know what I mean? Not at 140. That that That's going to be the weight of the fight. Because I think that what we see, what we're going to see is Pitbull Cruz that's maybe 142, 143 up against the guy who's 157, you know, 155. It, that That's a very big uh, 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 weight to give up to a person. But again, if a person is going to fight scared, it doesn't matter how much you weigh. If you're going to sit down and use your size and your, your power advantage, that's what's going to give him the advantage. 
I say if it goes the distance, maybe Pitbull gets the edge. But if there's a knockout in the middle of it, I'll, I'll, I'll flip a coin. You know, I'll, I'll make that bet. You know what I mean? Not really in my mind because it's Haram also. I don't want to gamble like that. But I would say that it, if it if it goes to cracked out in the first round and he tries to stand in the ring with him, uh, maybe like the champ said, Roley will find an angle that Pitbull is not uh, aware of. And that would be his key to victory. But if it goes the distance, then it favors Mr. Cruz. All right. And last but not least, Gilly. Who do you I have? think uh, Pitbull whitewashes Roley. Easy work. And I think that uh, like all the, all, the, all the good commentators and the legend on here said, boxing is a mental game. I mm -hmm. think that Tim Zhu will no longer be there mentally. I think Fedora will upset him because I think the, 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 the highs of, oh, I'm fighting Keith Thurman, Keith Thurman, and then being let down to like, oh, now I'm fighting Fedora. Uh, he just got knocked out. Uh, and I think Fedora's like, oh, I was fighting uh, him. Oh, shit, I get a chance to fight Tim Zoo for everything. I think mentally it's just two different places, and I think Fedora will upset Tim Zoo. All right. Well, we we will definitely find out this Saturday, March 30th, PBC. And when it does happen, y'all going to say Gilly called that shit. He called <laughs> and when it don't that. happen, we're going to say Gilly didn't lie about everything. You're going to say Gilly's a goddamn fool. <laughs> I'm coming back to Logan, and I, I, we're going to go out and grab some food. Thank you. <laughs> All love. Yeah, this uh, main event, obviously, with Tim Zhu and Sebastian Fundora and the co-main Rolando Romero versus Isaac Cruz. Um, and, and we can't forget, you know, it's a stack card pay-per-view pay from Erislani Lara, who we were talking earlier about the, the Cuban style. He's defending his title, too, against Michael Serafa. And another world title shot, um, world title defense between Julio Cesar Martinez and Angelino Cordova. All this going down March 30th, PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. You cannot miss it. And if you're in Vegas, T-Mobile Arena is where it's at. Thank you so much to all the panelists for all your in-depth analysis. Loved it. I can't wait to, to see who's right, who's wrong, and how exciting this Saturday will be. Thank you so much to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Legend, bro, love you, man. <laughs> oh, me too, Gilly. I can't wait to see you, bro. Peace, champ. Peace, champ.